these is I don't really care if they get glued on or soldered on or you know stabbed with a, 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 a sharpie or sharpie or a exacto knife or whatever. Because honestly, if they go bad, we'll just toss them and get another one. Um, this is our vinyl cutter. These things are about five, six hundred bucks. Um, it's it's a really good way to get into uh, vector graphic design. Um, and on top of that, if the kids don't go to college, they can work at a sign shop. Uh, these are some of the things that we've done. And th this is a really fun machine. The every every kid from sixth grade up, you know, loves it because they they like to decorate their laptops. Well, it's nice also because it's got a pretty quick turnaround time. Some things, I mean, their design will get printed off what in about a couple of minutes. Yeah. So if you're dealing with a class, I'm always dealing with a class where I at least have eight groups. And so if it's five or six minutes per group to get the decal out, that's not a bad thing. If we're looking more like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, then it gets to be a logistical problem if I have an hour long class. That's, that's true, and that, that actually, um, that becomes a problem with a lot of our machines. We have two major bots here, and we have a third maker bot that our science teacher, eighth grade science teacher has. Unfortunately, both of our maker bots are down. We've got to figure out what's going on. MakerBots, even as, you know, they're, they're kind of state of the art as far as this type of 3D printer, but they take a lot of care and feeding. So if you get a MakerBot, you need to really have somebody who can tinker well because they take a lot to keep them going. Um, but both of these machines have about a thousand hours on them worth of printing, so it's no wonder that they probably just need to be rebuilt. And, yeah. and, and off we go. Uh, teacher workstation is a mess, of course. Um, let's see. Yeah, so those cell phone holders were all built on, not these two, but the middle school's 3D printer, which I, I have over in the fine arts room, just because we're having issues with it. Yeah. But each one of those took about between 8 and 11 hours to build each of those cell phone holders that you saw. The bubble one took probably more about 13. So if you're running a class where you're 3D printing, you've got to think about, well, what's the size and the shape of those things that you want to 3D print for those groups? You have to factor that in. My uh, sixth and seventh grade robotics classes, we mess around with sumo bots, okay? And sumo bots are basically a robot that drives around on the black, and anytime it comes to the white, it turns around and goes back on the black. And the object is, is they push each other out, just like a sumo wrestling. With the sixth graders, we build those right out of Lego robots. And with seventh graders, we have a little bit more fun. Um, I designed this circuit board about a year ago, and it's going on its second or third revision now. But basically, I teach the kids how to solder, seventh graders, uh, solder and program the microprocessor that's on this. And then they build this, and this is uh, completely, well, it's laser cut and, um, and 3D printed. Um, already got some changes for next year, but uh, um, one of the things with uh, robot classes is at the end of robot class, everybody wants to take them home, and you can't take home my $250 robots. So if I design my own, these, um, the kids pay a $40 fee, and, and it comes out of that, and I have a little leftover to pay for vinyl and, you know, uh, filament and stuff like that. So, so that, was a, that was a good way. Uh, you guys can come on into the cage if you'd like. Uh, this cage was actually here prior to the, late, prior to the lab coming in, um, but we decided to put all the tools in here. This is our laser cutter, which, by the way, is one of the neatest uh, tools around. You can design something in Inkscape and, uh, you know, down to like, I don't know, 64th or, you know, of an inch. And it's, you know, it's, it's just very, very precise. Um, uh, this was cut out in acrylic. Um, How much are laser cutters? How much do they run? Well, this guy's about $3,500, and it's about as cheap as they come. We had to buy a uh, HEPA filter to vent it, um, and that was an extra $1,800. Just because of this. Because of our space. space. But if we were able to vent it out a window or something, you know, then it would have been fine. 
Um, so several of the kids' projects, well, one, you'll get to see he's used acrylic where he's rastered his logo into it and that he's built the sides out of it and built like air holes and that's part of his design was using using that for his for the fruit carrier project right so if you had a choice between a 3d printer and a laser cutter what would you pick um what age um eighth through twelfth um, i'd go with the laser cutter it's faster really? it's, it's much faster i mean I, like I, I had i had my students making puzzles in my physics class where they would make interlocking pieces they would put graphics on each one of the shapes um, each one of those would probably take 10 minutes to print. I mean, like I said, it, it, to me, it's, I mean, like, I really like what this produces, but the time, time crunch for when I teach 50, 50 to 69th graders makes it, makes it tougher for me. Okay. Yeah, but you can, you can do all kinds of stuff, including, um, engraving, uh, what is this, granite? Um, wow. Uh, you know, it'll do glass, it'll do acrylic, it'll do uh, eighth-inch plywood really nicely. Um, eighth-inch plywood, when you, when you put things like that on it, you can actually sort of finger joint these things together, mm -hmm. then a hot melt glue and you've built yourself a box, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so there's really neat things that you can do with this, and it's a little bit faster than, um, it's a lot faster than the MakerBot. And the MakerBot takes a lot of tinkering, and this thing, other than cleaning your optics, does not. It doesn't, yeah, because I'm, I'm not a good tinkerer. And I, I screw this up. Yeah, yeah it, it, <laughs> runs, it runs very well. Um, so, so anyway, full spectrum, uh, they do a pretty good job. There's our other MakerBot. Uh, we have shelves for lots of other stuff. Very quickly, um, let's see, you need safety goggles, uh, very important. Um, we have bins full of uh, stuff, and I was thinking about getting some more bins so we could have a boneyard. So if we have extra printer, um, you know, motors and, and batteries and whatever. I want to have, you know, five or six of these so I can say, look, whatever you find in there, you, you may use it, you know, uh, and, and then that works out really well. Um, let's see here. Uh, beside, behind you over here, we have soldering irons. These are all my seventh grade soldering irons that we use. Um, another projector. These are all our just miscellaneous tools. We should probably label these better so the kids know where to put things back. Yeah, shop, shop experience. Like, I, that's something we're going to try to work towards in terms but of putting things back. Yeah, we're we're definitely we're definitely growing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, we, that's we have a lot of cool. lessons learned. You know, uh, drill press gets used all the time, all the time, and that little scroll saw gets used all the time too. A lot of these are Harbor Freight toys or tools, um, and uh, they're darn cheap. Um, I think that scroll, press, scroll saw was under $100. The sander was too. Um, so, you know, we just keep, uh, we keep growing. This next year, we hope to get a CNC machine, which is basically an X, Y, Z on a router that's computer controlled, makes nice signs, makes thicker stuff. There's some kids who want to make uh, electric guitars, things like that, and, and that would put us in that realm. How do you, you know? handle the supervision of these particular tools? We show them how to use it, and then we let them use it. Um, you so you know, haven't had any drilled hands to, or...? Not yet. Not yet. Um, honestly, like, the most dangerous tool in here is probably this <laughs> grinder here, followed by that sander. Um, I would not, you know, I'm not going to let my sixth or seventh graders use either of those two. They can use regular sandpaper, but a junior or a sophomore in high school, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. Um, we're probably going to get a band saw. Band saws are actually fairly safe compared to like a table saw or, a, you know, a, or a router for, you know, routers are kind of dangerous. So, so I, you know, you have to look at that. but. But you don't learn unless you actually do, you know. So, so anyway, this is our fab lab. This is kind of our baby, and, and it's it's really exciting. The kids, uh, 
the kids really, really enjoy it. They come down here and they're really excited to do stuff because, you know, I mean, they, they live in such a, well, our, our kids live in this sterile environment where they never grew up, you know, running around in the woods or, or tearing stuff apart in their garage. Um, and they get, they get to build some of this stuff here, so. How long have you all had the Fab Lab? Uh, this is our first full year of okay. having it. We bought the uh, we bought the two maker bots the year before, and I use those in the computer lab. And, you know, we do, you, do you that. think the quality of the maker bots will improve? Do you, do you think that the problems you have now are just because we're still so beta version with the three D printing technology? Or? Um, well, let's see here. That that maker bot out there, it used to run. Every time, no exception. You'd put something in, and boom, and you know you would have it out in four or five hours. You know, um, it's just not that way anymore. How's the how's Greg's new maker? Greg's bot? is fine. Okay, Greg's is fine. I just have had some issues with compatibility and spools and stuff. Okay. Okay. This but, is great. Yeah, and his is the next generation up yeah. from MakerBot. Uh, it's there's, easier to calibrate. Yeah, there's a lot of other manufacturers out there, and there's are you know, probably comparable. So MakerBot has Thingiverse. Yeah, but you can use Thingiverse on any. Oh, you can? 3D printer. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's go upstairs. Sure. Yeah, absolutely.